Today, I'm going to walk you through the exact nine step fast track program that I use with my coaching clients that helps them lose one to two pounds every single week so that they can lose 20 pounds in just two to three months, all without them having to spend their life at the gym, do any boring cardio, follow a restrictive diet, or give up their social life. But in case you're wondering who I am and why you should listen to me, my name's Doug and I've been a personal trainer and a certified nutritionist for the last five years. And I've helped over a hundred guys and girls to get results like this, 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 and many, many more just like that. And before we get into it, let me say that each of the nine steps in the fast track program is as important as the other. So if you want the best result, make sure you stick around to the end, watch the whole video and implement everything because you cannot pick and choose this stuff if you want to get the best results. Okay, let's get started. Step number one, we have to start with your mindset. Going into this, you need to know and accept that this is going to be hard. If you want to lose fat fast, this is going to involve change and it's going to involve sacrifice. So the very first thing I want you to do is think about whether you really want to do this. And if you do want to do it, I want you to think about why you want to do it. If the why is strong enough, the how will take care of itself. The clients who have who get the best results are the ones who are intrinsically motivated. They have a deep-rooted driver that sees them go from the start to the finish without giving up. They don't rely on motivation and they certainly don't rely on willpower because both of those things are finite. When you start anything new, motivation and willpower is high. But when you're six weeks in and it's a cold, dark, rainy Tuesday morning, that motivation is going to be gone. So you cannot rely on it. You need an internal power source, an intrinsic driver, something that's gonna get you up on that cold, dark, wet Tuesday morning, something that's gonna keep you going. The next thing I want you to do is to set a realistic expectation. You can lose a lot of fat fast, but I don't want you to think you're gonna be losing 10 pounds a week. Aim to lose one to two pounds a week or five to 10 pounds a month. If you set yourself up with high expectations, you set yourself up to fail. That's not to say we're gonna take it easy. That's not to say you won't be able to achieve something amazing. And by the way, it's absolutely fine if you don't wanna do this. You don't have to lose 20 pounds in two to three months. Speed is far less important than trajectory. I would much rather set you up in the right direction and allow you to dictate the pace that you go at. Okay, step number two, we need to sort out your calories. Now we've got your mindset right, you need to know your numbers, specifically your maintenance calorie number. Your maintenance calorie number is the number of calories that you would wanna consume if you just wanted to stay the same, if you wanted to maintain the current level of body fat, and current weight that you're at. But you don't wanna do that, so you wanna be consuming fewer than your maintenance calorie number. And we call that a calorie deficit. If you wanna lose one pound of fat a week, you wanna be in a 500 calorie deficit each day. And if you wanna lose two, you wanna be in a thousand calorie deficit. And if you wanna help calculate your maintenance calorie number and your calorie deficit, then you can try out the completely free calorie calculator that I've built using the first link in the description underneath this video. I'm gonna send you my personalized recommendations for you, and I'm gonna explain all those numbers in detail. Now, it's all well and good in theory, saying that you're gonna to stick to a 500 calorie deficit every single day. But every single day isn't the same. Monday is very different to Thursday, is very different to Saturday. And not only that, stuff comes up unexpectedly. Plan as we might, days go awry. Whether it's your family, your kids, your pets, your job, whatever it might be, stuff is gonna come up. You're gonna have bad night's sleeps. You might get sick, you might have a hangover. And whilst I'm a huge advocate and there's a lot of power in routine, doing the same thing every single day for two to three months is gonna get very monotonous and very boring. We wanna mix things up a little bit. So rather than trying to stick to a 500 calorie deficit or a thousand calorie deficit every single day, what I'd encourage you to do is this. So let's say your maintenance calorie number is 2,500. If you wanted to lose one pound of fat every single week, you'd wanna be consuming 2,000 calories. So rather than aiming to eat 2,000 calories every single day, what I'd suggest you do instead is multiply 2,000 by seven. Now you've got 14,000 calories for your whole week. This is gonna give you a lot more control and put you back in the driver's seat. More importantly though, it's gonna give you a lot more freedom and a lot less restriction with your food. And we wanna make this process as easy as possible. And looking at your calories in the context of your week rather than day to day is gonna do just that for you. The way I encourage most of my clients to manage this is have lower calorie days at the start of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, maybe even Thursday, when stress levels tend to be a little bit lower and motivation tends to be a little bit higher and there's less social commitments. And then towards the back of the week when stress might be higher or you might wanna go out with your partner or with friends and celebrate with drinks and food, then you can build in high calorie days for that. And then what I'd always encourage is Sunday is a bit of a reset day. You're gonna make your Monday so much easier if you bring your calories back down on a Sunday. And whilst we're on the subject of calories, it's important for me to say that you do not need to demonize any of the macronutrients, your protein, your carbs, 
carbs or your fats. They all play their own vital role in your health and well-being. So my recommendation to almost all of my clients is they eat a balanced omnivorous diet with plenty of animal and plant-based foods. There's also no need to do any time-restricted eating like intermittent fasting. But saying that, it has been proven to help some people create that caloric deficit. But if you're going to do it, don't follow the conventional 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. eating window. Because if you do that, it's likely to hamper your sleep quality. And that's because digestion is a metabolic process. It raises your heart rate. And any process that's metabolic and raises your heart rate prevents your body from getting into that restorative state that we need to be able to achieve deep REM sleep. So you might be able to fall asleep after a big meal, but it's unlikely that you're going to sleep well. So if you are going to do intermittent fasting or you're already doing it and you feel like it's working for you, all I'd suggest is you move your eating window to earlier in the day. When you start is completely up to you. Like I said, there is no particular magic in the time of day that you eat that's going to elicit more fat loss. But some people find it easier to have discipline around the times that they eat. But if if you are going to do it, then I'd recommend you finish eating by about 5 to 6 p.m. in order to maximize that sleep quality. Okay, let's move on to step number three, which is your protein. Very simply put, I encourage every single one of my clients, whether they are male, whether they are female, whether they are young, whether they are old, to eat a high protein diet. And this is for a few reasons. Protein is the most satiating of the three macronutrients. It is going to physically fill your stomach for longer. And that's because it's harder for your stomach to break down than carbs and fats. A very easy example, if you want to test this for yourself, is trying to eat three chicken breasts in a row. Not only will you find it very difficult to finish that, but you won't feel hungry after you've done it. Protein also requires the most energy, the most calories to break down. And as a result of that, it has the highest, what we call thermic effect of food. It requires more heat, more energy to break down. And that energy comes in the form of calories. Protein also comes with fantastic health benefits, whether it's for your hair, your skin, your nails, and basically every other cell in your body. Protein even boosts your immune system. It's incredibly multifaceted. And fun fact, it's actually named after the ancient Greek word protos, which means first. So it gives you an idea of just how important the Greeks thought it was. And if they thought it was important, you should too. Step number four. I recommend that your diet is mostly made up of whole, voluminous, high fiber foods. I used to be a huge believer in the 80-20 rule, eating 80% of your food for function and 20% for fun. And that can work. But in this video, we're talking about losing fat fast. And if you want to do that, eating 20% of your food for fun is going to make this whole process a lot harder for you. If you're serious about losing fat fast, then I recommend you cut out all junk food for four to six weeks. This is going to help you in so many ways. Junk food is engineered to be hyper palatable. In other words, it's made to be addictive so that you constantly want more of it. It also doesn't tend to fill you up, so you're more likely to go over your calories by eating more of other stuff. Plus, it makes you feel lethargic. And as a result of that, you're going to move less, which means you're going to expend fewer calories. If you expend fewer calories, you're going to have more pent up energy in the evening, which is going to cause havoc on your sleep schedule. And if you mess up your sleep, well, that's going to make everything a lot more difficult because it's going to cause havoc on your endocrine system. But we'll talk more about that in a minute. The other thing to say about junk food is that it's terrible for your gut health. It leads to more bloating, more inflammation, constipation, and much poorer nutrient absorption. So listen, my advice isn't that you have to give it up forever. As I said right at the beginning of this video, if you're serious about losing fat fast, this is going to involve change and this is certainly going to involve some sacrifice. A bit like if you were going to do dry January, just commit to it for four to six weeks. If a lot of your current diet is made up of processed and junk food, then the first few days are going to be hard. You're going to get cravings. But I promise you after just four to six weeks, in fact, probably less than that, you're going to see such a big difference. And more importantly, you're going to feel so much better you'll probably never want to go back to it. But at the very least, this is going to change your relationship with junk food and processed food forever. And remember, the processed food isn't even real food. It isn't produced. It's manufactured. So think about that the next time you reach for a cookie. Trust me, I know they taste good. I'm as big a fan as anybody. But they're really not serving you. So instead, like I said, what I'd advise you focus on is whole, high volume, fibrous food. And it's basically going to do the exact opposite of what junk food does. It's going to fill you up. It's going to help your digestive health. It's going to help your gut health. It's going to reduce your cravings. It's going to make staying within your calories much easier. It's going to give you more longer lasting energy, but it's also going to help you to sleep better. If you aim for 30 grams of fiber a day, you're going to find this whole process so much easier. Fiber is a little bit like protein in the sense that it fills you up because it's actually impossible for your stomach and your body to break it down. Okay, step number five. Let's talk about hydration. The TLDR here is super straightforward. 
drink a lot of water. Water is one of the only lifelong relationships that you will have, along with fresh air and sleep. You have it every day from the day you're born to the day you die. Aside from the obvious health benefit that it keeps you alive, water also suppresses your appetite. And it does this by not only filling your stomach, but actually stretching the walls of your stomach, sending signals to your brain that you are full. Dehydration, on the other hand, can actually slow down your metabolism. And it also leads to your brain confusing thirst for hunger. But more often than not, you're not hungry, you're just bored. Water also acts like a secondary energy system to your body. And that's because staying hydrated prevents you from getting lethargic. A little bit like if you have too much processed and junk food, the lethargy that you're going to feel if you're even one to 2% dehydrated is gonna slow you down and you're gonna burn less calories. Staying hydrated, on the other hand, prevents you from getting lethargic. And that's gonna keep you more active and burning more calories, making fat loss easier. And water can even influence the release of your hunger hormones, leptin and ghrelin. It reduces the amount of ghrelin in your bloodstream, which is a good thing because ghrelin is your hunger hormone, and it increases the amount of leptin, which is also a good thing because leptin is your satiety hormone. It dictates how full you feel. So in an ideal world, you want your ghrelin to be nice and low and your leptin to be nice and high. And drinking a lot of water and staying hydrated can help you do that. Okay, step number six. We touched on it earlier, but let's talk about your sleep in more detail. I used to think that sleep, nutrition, and movement were equally important when it came to your overall health and well-being. But the older I get myself and the more people I coach, the more I realize that sleep is paramount above everything. I'm 100% convinced that it's the most important element to your overall health. Sleep is when your brain and body reset and charges back up. It's a little bit like if you put your iPhone on charge when you go to bed and it updates the software every single night. That's what good sleep looks like. Your software is constantly being updated, constantly being improved. Sleep is when your hormones are brought back into balance. Bad sleep, particularly chronic bad sleep, if you're sleeping badly more than two to three nights, is going to significantly impact your stress, energy, and hunger levels. It's going to make what is already hard impossible. Everyone says to get seven to nine hours of sleep a night, but truth be told, if you focus on your sleep quality, seven hours is more than enough, and let's be real, who the heck is getting nine hours sleep a night? The quickest and easiest way to improve your sleep quality is to make sure that your room is cold, dark, and you're wearing earplugs. And in the medium to long term, the best investment that you can make is in your bed, your mattress, your bedding, and your pillow. This might cost you a thousand pounds or a thousand dollars, but a good bed, a good mattress, and a good pillow is gonna last you five, if not 10 years. Let's be conservative and say that stuff's only gonna last you five years. That's still 1,825 nights. Suddenly that investment doesn't look so big, does it? If you were to divide 1,000 pounds or $1,000 by 1,825, it comes out to 54 pence or 54 cents a night. And let's be real, it's hard to say that that's a bad investment if it's gonna help you to sleep better, wake up feeling more refreshed, make you more productive throughout the day, give you more energy, and make your fat loss journey all the easier. The other super simple, easy system that you can implement today to improve your sleep quality is the 3 two, one rule. I touched on the three earlier. It's where you stop eating three hours before you go to bed. The two is where you stop drinking anything two hours before bed. And the one is where you come off your phone, your laptop, your TV an hour before bed. I already explained the three. The two is to stop you waking up in the night to go to the toilet. And the one is because the blue light that is emitted from our devices prevents the production of our sleep hormone, which is called melatonin. All right, moving on to step seven, let's change the focus and talk about burning some calories, starting with your walking. Because the best way to burn fat fast isn't just to eat less, it's to move more because that way you increase your maintenance calories. If we increase your maintenance calories and you eat a little bit less, it's gonna make the whole process a lot faster and a lot easier. Walking 15,000 steps a day will burn anything from 500 to 750 calories, depending on how fast you walk and how much you weigh. I'm not saying you need to do this, but it will make it significantly easier. And it's gonna give you immense mental health benefit. Walking around outside, you're obviously going to get fresh air and hopefully you're going to get some sunlight. But more than that, it's also going to activate a part of your nervous system called the parasympathetic nervous system. This is the part of the nervous system that's linked to rest and relaxation. Changing your environment, getting outside and going for a walk is scientifically proven to reduce your stress levels by activating this part of your nervous system. And of course, you can multitask while you're walking. You can listen to music or a podcast. You can catch up with friends. You can even take walking meetings. Because let's be honest, everyone's over Zoom now. It's also fun far more sustainable than running. One of the biggest barriers that stops people from starting their weight loss journey is that they assume they have to do a lot of cardio. They assume they have to be running three, five, or even seven days a week. But the reality is, if you're walking 10 to 15,000 steps a day, you're actually gonna burn just as many calories. The only difference is, is the run takes less time. And trust me, I've proven this. I've done it as an experiment myself. Walking is much more sustainable than running. It's easier. There's lower risk of injury and it's gonna cause less fatigue. Even if you can only get 10,000 steps in a day, you're still 
still going to burn three to 500 calories. And that takes us nicely onto step eight, your workout. You do not need to go to the gym seven days a week. And as I said, you do not need to be going on long runs every single day. Three high intensity, full body workouts each week is a great start point to aim for. And when I say high intensity, I don't mean hit training. I mean doing compound movements, squats, deadlifts, lunges, bent over rows, chest presses, press ups, pull ups, dips. If you can go more than three times a week, great. But workouts honestly are not the be all and end all here. One workout is going to burn anything from three to 500 calories, depending on the intensity and your weight. And that's why I emphasize walking so much because like running, working out, lifting weights is harder than going for a walk. Think about it this way. Even if you were to go to the gym for two hours, seven days a week, you would still only be spending 8% of your week in the gym. And that's obviously a very extreme example that I wouldn't recommend to anybody. Just to give you a point of comparison, I absolutely love going to the gym, but I'll still only train for five days a week, one hour at a time. So even though I love the jig, I'm spending less than 3% of my week there. You see what I'm saying? What you do out of the gym is far more important than what you do in. And I think that's a really important point to make because again, a little bit like the running, I think a lot of people, the biggest barrier to them starting their weight loss journey is assuming they're going to have to do workouts every single day. It's simply not true. See the main benefit of exercise being for your mental health, for pushing yourself out of your comfort zone and for the effect it's going to have on your body composition. Last but not least, because remember at the beginning I said that every step is as important as the other, step nine, tracking progress, accountability, and consistency. The more data that you are gathering throughout this process, the better. The more of the seven steps that I've just taken you through that you can tick off every single week, the higher the likelihood that you're going to lose those 20 pounds. Your calories, your protein, your water, your fiber, your sleep, your steps, and your workouts. If you can hit your calorie target every single week, if you can eat 100 grams of protein and 30 grams of fiber, if you can drink three liters of water, if you can get 10 to 15,000 steps, if you can do three workouts a week, and if you can sleep at least seven hours a night and get high quality sleep, then the good news for you is that I can tell you with 100% conviction that you will lose 20 pounds in just two to three months. The other reason I want you to focus on gathering as much data as you can is it means you're not gonna be as focused on the scale because the scales will fluctuate day to day and week to week. Remember, there's a difference between losing weight and losing fat. So take pictures, take measurements, and look out for how your clothes are fitting. And then on the accountability side of things, the best thing you can do is hire a coach but if you don't want to do that then i'd recommend doing this with someone else share this video with them so that they can see how simple this process can be and then start at the same time and hold each other accountable every day and every week whether it's a partner a friend a family member or a colleague and last but not least guys consistency stay the course today i've given you the formula of how to do this but it's not going to happen overnight but if you lose a few pounds then you've got all the evidence that you need that this works don't be tempted to chop and change or try and find shortcuts because this is the short of course, you can make tweaks as you go through the process, but what I'm saying is don't yo-yo between diets and workout plans. Consistency is what pulls all of this together. Accountability and support makes it easier. I've made this video to give you all the information that you need to succeed, but information without implementation counts for nothing. Don't become another one of these information junkies that knows everything but does nothing. If you're overweight and you don't want to be overweight, implement all of this. And don't wait, start right now. The stuff that we've spoken about that you can do today. You don't need to wait for tomorrow and you certainly don't need to wait for Monday. But listen, if you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed and you're not sure where to start or you're worried you won't be able to stick to this, then maybe I can help. Because I've been where you are and I know how it feels. Before I was a coach, I lost 45 pounds in just four months. I do what I do because I want more people to look and more importantly, to feel their best, to have more confidence and to live a longer, healthier and happier life. And I can remove all the guesswork and fast track your progress by building you a personalized program and holding you accountable. So if you're serious about losing 20 to 30 pounds and doubling your energy levels in the next 90 days, then click the second link in the description underneath this video to join the waiting list for my online coaching program. I really hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, I would absolutely love it if you could show your support by smashing the thumbs up button and of course, subscribing to the channel. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.